Hello, welcome to this presentation of a CFD study of a container ship's nominal wake fields in oblique regular waves. My name is Jens Neuwalter. This work was done in collaboration with my PhD student, Henning Miglesen, and my colleague, Jan Lin Xiao, at the Department of Mechanical Engineering at the Technical University of Denmark in Copenhagen. And I'm also at Computational Science and Engineering Laboratory at ETH Zurich, Switzerland. And the funding was from the Danish Maritime Fund. So when we design a ship, we usually do that in calm water either with CFD or in towing tanks. And similarly for the propellers, we may either resolve them fully or we may remove them and then consider the uh, flow field induced by the presence of the ship sailing in calm water at the location of the uh, propeller and then use potential flow, flow theory to uh, design the propeller. But of course, reality is that ships are not always sailing in calm waters. And the research question is therefore how does sailing in oblique waves influence the nominal wake fields uh, for the propeller, and hence potentially also change the uh, the uh, design foundation for the propeller. So the ship that we study was a cruiser container ship, an academic ship that was never built in full scale, but used uh, in many, many uh, studies, both uh, in towing tanks and in CFD calculations. We usually present the results in a corner system that follows the propeller, but also in, uh, in a fixed coordinate system. We started different uh, wave headings, head C, bow quartering C, beam C, stern quartering C, and following C. The waves are as long as the, as the ship in this case, and the steepness of the waves are one to 60. The numerical setup that we employ is that we use the commercial CFT software star system plus from Siemens. Uh, we do that in a U-RANS, unsteady Reynolds average near Stokes approximation using the realizable capsule model and also the Kilmega. SST model with wall modeling. So the wall Y plus values are within 30 to 200. Uh, the waves are imposed by boundary forcing, as you can see on the right. We force all around to allow the ship to sail in all directions. And the waves are resolved using the volume of fluid approximation. We use second order discretization both time and space with a Coulomb number of less than 0 0.5. The mesh, the background mesh, is moving along with this uh, mean speed of the ship. And then we will use an overset mesh to allow the ship to roll and pitch and heave, et cetera. And then to ensure a, an accurate coupling between the background mesh and the overset mesh, we use an adaptive mesh refinement to in, ensure a equal grid spacing in that overlap region. On the bottom left, you can see the overset mesh in red uh, encapsulation and the background mesh illustrated with the Kelvin wave local refinement that was uh, em employed. The ship, as I said, is free to move and heave and pitch and roll, but it's constrained as it was in the experiments in yaw and search. And in the present case, we did that use uh, by user coding. So we compute the fluid torque and, and the resistance in, uh, so the fluid torque in yaw and the resistance. And since these uh, two uh, contributions will be added uh, by the CFT software, then we subtract them by external forces. So we cancel the internally computed forces. This can result in a slight drift due to round off. So we added small torsional and linear spring to prevent this to drift off. And that constrains the motion of the ship to only heave, pitch, and roll. Here's an illustration from the simulations. You see there's fairly large amplitudes uh, of, the, of, the, of the motion, in this case, in bow quartering sea waves. And uh, then we consider the wake fraction. So we measure the velocity field in the color disk that you see where the propeller would be. Yeah, the color is the actual velocity and the velocity vectors are the in-plane velocities. And we measure the wake fraction defined in the bottom left, which is the ratio uh, of the, of the uh, perturbation of the velocity to the area, average of the disk. So if it's one, then there's, there's a completely uniform velocity at the disk with the speed equal to the uh, ship. Otherwise, there will be a deviation due to the presence of the hull. And of course, we can do a time average of that, uh, which is on the, on the bottom right. Now we do verification to ensure that our numerical simulations are accurate. So we run at three different mesh resolutions, uh, at 3 million, 7.8 million, and 15 million grid points. And we consider the grid convergence index for the estimated mean wake fraction. And uh, you see for the mean value, we are within 2% for all three meshes, but if you want to capture accurately the, uh, the amplitudes of the wake fraction, then we need a mesh two, which is around these 
seven to eight million grid points, and it requires about 67 hours of computational time on 80 cores uh, computer. We do, did a similar study for the required time step resolution. So we consider 500, 750, and 1,000 time steps per wave period. And we again see that uh, the 750 is what is required if we want an, both a mean and an amplitude below 2%. Uh, the 500 time steps per wave period would produce two large errors in the amplitude of the wake fraction. Then we can do validation. So we can compare first the uh, wake fraction with the calm water, the steady state. On the left, you see the experiments from Ruid Al from 2020. And on the right are the present safety calculations. Again, the colors are the outer plane velocity and the vectors are the in-plane velocity. And you see a fair good agreement uh, between uh, this. We can also do validation in, 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 uh, in head waves where there's experiments conducted also by Wu. And you can see here an instantaneous picture uh, comparing the left, the experiments with the right simulations. And you can time averages over one encounter period and then you can compare with the results from Gagero et al. from the same group. And they get a wake fraction measured, a mean one of 0 0.281, and we get a 0 0.274. So a discrepancy uh, of the time averaged wake fraction of less than, than 3%. With that validation and verification, we can now turn to the, uh, to the study of the physics. And here we first consider the wake field in calm water. Again, you see they have the axial component, which is a color code, has uh, you can see that there's, there's a hull that has produced a boundary layer and also a, a secondary flow illustrated with, with the vectors here. You can do the, uh, the same in stern quartering C here and then see how the unsteadiness of, of the, of the uh, wave, waves modify and produces vortices that are perturbing the flow in the, uh, in the wake region. We can uh, plot this for different uh, headings as function of the encounter period. And we see up to 39% variation in the uh, normal wake fraction compared to the uh, calm water, which is a black curve. So a rather significant uh, variation in the instantaneous wake fraction compared to the corresponding uh, calm water. You can time average that and come on and look at that. And you see that in, uh, you have up to 16% variation on the average compared to the uh, calm water solution. So rather significant variations if, if you consider how it was designed. You can relate these uh, results also to a modified advanced angle that the propeller would see if placed there and the bottom, the beta T there is the uh, angle of attack of the uh, imaginary propeller, which is of course given by the actual velocity divided with the tangential velocity first accounting for the motion of the propeller and then the induced velocity by the flow of, of UT there. And then you see what on the left, you have the uh, calm water solution as function of the encounter period and the, which is, and the angular position, the top will be at 12 o'clock and the 180 will be at six o'clock. And you see a variation in the angle experienced by the propeller from eight to 20%. Uh, as it's going through the, uh, the boundary layer uh, created by the hull. And on the right, you see the corresponding one if you also account for the presence of the waves. So again, rather large fluctuations in the, uh, in the uh, advanced angle. So with this little study, I hope to have shown you, uh, demonstrated to you that CFD does allow actual, accurate prediction of nominal wake fields in both calm and oblique wake, wakes. For the KCS container ship, the mean wake field that was found to increase 16% in stern quartering sea waves compared to the calm water. And the amplitude of the wake field uh, was up to 39% of the mean of, uh, for head sea waves. And we believe that these findings are important for the design of the propeller, for instance, uh, including the, the risk of, of cavitation. This work was sub submitted to Applied Ocean Research and has gone through the second review, so we hope it will be accepted and come out soon for more information. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention.